Hello and welcome to As the CMMC Turns. I'm Matt Titcomb, the CEO of Peak InfoSec. I'm also a CMMC certified assessor and CMMC curriculum developer. Today's episode of As the CMMC Churns is Assessors and Toddlers. Yep, assessors are a lot like toddlers. Now, I'm gonna stop here, make sure everybody's kind of clear. This presentation right now is not meant for assessors. This is meant for you, companies getting ready to undergo a formal assessment. And this is really to set some of your expectations of the way people like me as an assessor of the way we're doing things and why we're doing things in the assessment. So again, little tongue in cheek poking at us, but you know, this is to help you, the organization seeking compliance to understand why we're going to feel a lot like toddlers in your environment. Now, that being said, assessors, well, we do require a lot of handholding. We need to be guided through stuff. We can't be left alone. Bad things happen when you leave assessors alone. And guess what? We're going to ask you a lot of questions, more questions, and even more questions. And guess what? We have to experience everything. So unfortunately, and this is where there's a lot of frustration that does uh, come out with being an assessor, is the simple fact that, um, yeah, it's just kind of the way it is. And if you've got toddlers, you'll kind of understand this. Now, the simple thing for guiding your top no wait, assessors is rule one, do not leave your assessors alone to figure anything out. Um, the problem is when you leave a toddler slash assessor alone, bad things happen. Uh, they get into things they shouldn't be getting. They don't understand what they're getting into. And then they come to wrong assumptions and do all types of bad things that get themselves hurt or in your case, your company. So you do not want to leave an assessor alone to figure things out. You Rule number two, because of rule number one, is you need to use your system security plan, your document traceability matrix, and your supporting artifacts to really leash your assessors in. Now, that picture of the kid right there, yeah, they didn't have one of me, but I am I know I had a leash, so I was that type of kid running amok, not a shocker. Now, this is actually in line with the discussion from NIST 800-171, where the best use case of a system security plan is that it is highly referenced and that it is supported by additional documentation. Um, so that document traceability matrix really is your reference artifact. And you do really want to be able to use it to point and to guide your assessor as they're going through the assessment on how to find and understand and where you're doing things. So let's take a look at what that document traceability matrix should look like. Uh, again, there are tools out here that have these. Now this is ours. We use this uh, from a manual perspective. And right here, we're just looking at, at 311. 311 is going to be driven by policy. Now, you want to guide the assessor, if you can, to the paragraph statement in a policy or anything else you're specifically pointing to. You don't want me to read the entire policy and go, well, where is it? Next thing you know, because now we're in the interview session, you're having to answer me. So if you can point me here, you're better off. So hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Point the assessor to where they need to go in every one of these steps. Now for this one, there is no organization defined parameters. There's no related plans for us, but we do have related procedures. Now, the new user onboarding, well, that's how we onboard and limit authorized users. The new device and mobile device authorization procedure or how we uh, uh, authorize and limit uh, devices the configuration management procedures for those processes acting on behalf of authorized users, powbows, or service accounts in human language. So related to that, when we kind of get through the process at the end, if there was a supporting artifact, we would provide that list of authorized users. 
And then that would be, okay, here's where you should see it. And then here's all of our list of authorized users. Now let's go pick on another example. Let's talk in the notice and consent banner language. In this case, again, we had a policy statement. Oh, we do have an ODP. This is the way it should be. It is a standard. And you know, again, this is kind of leaning forward to 800-171 revision three draft. Uh, you see the same thing in 172 right now. This is then managed by the configuration management procedure. Again, this is our methodology for how we do this. And this in turn is driven primarily by the component baseline and the configuration item. Now that is Azure Active Directory and that's the branding part of Azure Active Directory or an Intune and that's the Windows 10 uh, 11 device settings. Now supporting artifact that would be done in the screenshot branding. You know, hey, here's the way it actually looks when it's implemented. Now let's go through another example where we do see plans. So uh, incident response, um, again, this is something where that capability is required. Well, we have a policy that in turn drives the requirements. We have both an audit and accountability plan. Again, what feeds into the incident response and the incident response plan itself. Now, the incident response plan does have some procedures in there, but we also have a separate playbook that we follow to implement uh, specific procedures around responding to ransomware, et cetera. Now in this case, there's no configuration items and there's no evidentiary supporting artifacts because those would be all the things that are provided. This matrix, when you provide again, that body of evidence to me as an assessor, I'm going to go 311, I'm going to go, okay, this, this, and I'm going to go read and examine all of these to get my understanding of the way you operate. Okay. Now, the thing is, is we use this traceability matrix. You got to recognize that toddler assessors, well, we need to learn the hard way. Um, the simple reality is, and this comes out of the CMMC assessment procedure. This is a draft, and this is a, this is a tailored version directly out of NIST 800-171 Alpha. Organizations are not expected to employ all assessment methods or objects. <clears throat> You as the organization getting assessed are expected to be ready for all. We get to pick and choose to what makes best sense for us. Rather, we have the, and we also in turn have the flexibility to determine the level of effort needed and assurance to make sure you have implemented the requirements that are achieving the intended effect. All right. So, Again, this is kind of a toddler. You don't know where we're going to stop and how far and crazy we're going to go. Well, the simple reality of this is we're not going to trust you. Just because you provide documentation to us does not mean we go, oh, okay, we're good. We can't. We have to validate everything. Toddlers, you know, this is kind of that hard way. You know, don't put your fingers on the stove. You're going to burn them. Yeah, done it. I, every one of my kids did it. They had to learn the hard way. Sometimes that's still the best way to learn. So, yeah. Now, related to that, we are always going to have to validate the examinations always. There is not a requirement that does not require examination. Now, depending upon how well you do in your examination, again, getting back to that traceability matrix, um, the more you give us in that, the less we have to interview, the less we have to test. Again, comes back to rather organizations, certified assessors have the flexibility to determine the level of effort needed and the assurance required. Um, the better you describe it to us and the better you guide us through that examinations, the better off you are. So let's kind of walk through what to expect in the way we're going to learn as a toddler assessor. So again, let's go back to that security and notice and consent banner. And let's now look at 319 alpha. Have you identified what that should be? So we're going to want to examine and we're really going to specifically want to look for that. The item highlighted is the documented approval use of system notification banners. What is that language? Well, in Peak InfoSec, we have an organization defined parameter. This is what it looks like. That's what ours should be. 
All right. Well, our next thing is we're going to want to see, well, how have you implemented this? Well, again, we're now going to look for, is your implementation consistent with that design documentation? And in doing so, we're going to probably want to talk to system or network admins or people responsible for information security, et cetera. That's going to show up looking like this. Again, this is our configuration item for the Azure Active Directory notice and consent banner. If you jump back in the uh, video and go look back at that notice, you'll see that that matches. Although I've got two pipes versus one. Eh. You know, so again, this is what the technical design documentation looks like. Well, I'm not a satisfied toddler. I want to see this to make sure it actually is the way it is. Again, is it consistent? And is it properly displayed when, dis when working? Well, that is a screenshot, a little bit redacted, of our actual uh, notice and consent banner from Azure Active Directory. Cool. That's what we expect as an assessor. Can you show us? And are you doing what you're telling us you're supposed to be doing? Sorry, this is the way we learn that your environment and how it operates. Now, this is really coming because we fundamentally as assessors are never satisfied. Now, this is coming out of 800-171 alpha. This is the um, Appendix D, the assessment procedure. This is my interpretation of this, but it kind of lays out that when you're doing your SPRS score, you're really doing it at a basic level because you're assessing yourself against the requirements. When we get to focused, by default, we are now assessing you completely and wholly against the 320 assessment objectives. And then we're now looking against all those objectives, all of your components, and we're now testing a sample of those components. As we move up from focused to comprehensive, that sample size is growing. Now, again, that sample size is up to us in accordance with 171 Alpha, um, pending any guidance coming from DOD or the Cyber AB on minimum sample sizes. Um, and it will only be minimal sample sizes. They will completely allow us to go and expand and go more. Because if you've dealt with toddlers, as soon as they start to figure out you didn't quite tell them the complete truth, they're going to go poke at everything. And that's just the way we act too. We will never be satisfied if we start to see something fuzzy and wrong at that medium level or that really the focus level. Now, this does lead into this relationship diagram in the simple fact that conformity as an assessment is really evaluated against all systems of type against the assessment objectives to fulfill the requirement. So that's really what we're doing. And we get to pick from any system component you've got in here. Now that does mean you can also inherit controls from another system of type, duo, etc. So you can inherit from these in that space. But however, the moment one of those components fails an assessment objective, crap rolls uphill. That now means your requirement is now non-compliant. That is fundamentally why we're never satisfied because in the background, this is what we're evaluating you against during your actual conformity assessment. Having fun yet? Yeah, raising toddlers isn't fun. It's not as bad as teenagers, but yeah, it's got its own challenges. So let's go ahead and sum up. That very well could be a picture of me. Um, we have to learn the hard ways, toddler assessors, and that does mean we're going to be going in through all of your components and figuring out how things work. Now, we have to examine everything. We are going to ask you a perpetual set of questions, and we're going to want to see how it works for ourselves. That's just the way it is. Um, I know this alone is very frustrating during assessments, especially when in the back of your mind, you've got stress, you've got worry, and then we're really kind of coming off like we don't trust you. Well, we can't. So, sorry. It's not personal. It's just kind of the way it operates. And then likewise, related to this one is, 
hold your toddler assessor's hand using your document traceability matrix. We are posting related to this one, to this uh, as the CMMC churns a sample template. It's a Microsoft Word document that we use uh, for all of our clients. Um, not all the uh, the GRC tools do a good job at the level of detail we want. So we do recommend having something like this to guide your assessor with. If your GRC tool, or if you haven't written this in your system security plan, etc. And then last but last not least is always remember rule number one. Do not leave your toddler assessors alone to figure things out. Um, when we are left alone, we will underinterpret, overinterpret, and invariably cause you more headaches and pain than what it's worth if you spend your time and properly document everything in your system security plan and show us how it all fits together in your document traceability matrix. It will make your life a lot easier to raise your toddler assessor and go through your assessment successfully. So again, I'm Matt Titcomb from Peak InfoSec. Thanks for joining us for today's As the CMMC Churns, and we'll see you next time.